Podcast, episode 468. I'm Brandon. I'm here with Ryan. We're going to multiply like rabbits. Now hit our theme song! Yeah. Jesus, that was fast. Holy. Wow. You're never going to catch a rabbit in the wild. Wow. Ooh. Oh, you know who I will catch? Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Very good. What is going down? A whole bunch is going down. We've got a very interesting topic to talk about today. A very good deck sent in mm-hmm. by our good friend, the Meat Gazer. Mm. I'm doing the, the, the nut tiddling thing, which you would know if I, you were watching on YouTube. Which you should be. Thank you very much. We're going to talk about that deck, some other stuff. Before we get to any of that stuff, we have to thank our official business daddies, FusionGamingOnline.com. They are your source for all your gaming needs, as well as Pile of Bones Brewing Co. They're the second coolest thing to come out of Regina, as well as being the official beer sponsor for CCO Sidewalk Slam! Season 3, coming soon to YouTube. Very much We're so. going to change the graphic on the screen behind us soon, but Ryan didn't know, in fairness, that I was going to switch it up. Over the next last couple of weeks. Ah, uh, very much so. Yeah. Okay. So big thanks to, of course, Fusion Gaming CCO Holiday promo code still in effect. You're going to get a discount on all of the Christmas presents you're going to buy for yourself or your friends and loved ones if you have any of those. Which you probably do because you're probably a good person because you listen to Commander Cookout and. This is important. Maybe you want to save some of those all important dollars to buy presents for those people after you buy between 25 and 40 of the same card. Very much so. We're going to tell you what that means in a second. I'm going to use my savings from CCO Holiday promo code. Yeah. I'm going to buy eggnog, but light eggnog because I'm healthy. Oh, it is eggnog season, oh, isn't it? Oh, baby. I'm going to drink about 50 eggnogs freaking today. Mm-hmm. Actually, Actually, when this episode comes out, I'm actually in Mexico. You have zero eggnog. They don't have eggnog there, but they have literally anything else I want to put inside my body. Do they not have eggnog in Mexico? Like, it doesn't exist? Like, if you went to a, a person in Mexico and said, hey, Mr. Mexican man, is could I get some eggnog, please? Would he look at you and go, what the hell are you talking about, Yes, Gringo? guaranteed they do not have eggnog there. What's the word for friend in Mexican? Do we, or Spanish, I guess. What are they? Uh, do we know? Compadre? Sure. Essay? What is the word for friend in Mex- in Spanish? This traditional Mexican rum pulp recipe is made with only five ingredients. Oh. Easy to make. All you need is a little patience while stirring the eggnog. Ooh. So their eggnog is called rum pulp. Rom Pope. We learned a thing. Thank you. We I did. want to romp the Pope. We did everybody and educate. Thank you, producer there we Gary. Go. From the Dufferin Avenue Media Network, whose studios we are sitting in currently, we really appreciate them giving us a home for the show, yep. a warm place to sit thanks to the space heater, yep. a place that we can play that freaking arcade game over there sometimes, yep. and drink CC Offy while we are on the air. Very much so. So, hmm. I want to know, because this is a quite a polarized topic issue sure, sure conundrum is. in the nation and the greater communities that you may exist in at large Ooh. eggnog let us know in the comments do you drink it do you hate it do you love it my personal favorite crown royal northern harvest eggnog and apple slices let me, let me i like that let me hit you with I what like i like that. i i like eggnog yep me too by itself yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. kind of weird. I like to drink just a glass of eggnog. You know, I'll, every year, every year at Christmas. You're making people gag. I buy, I buy one two-liter carton of eggnog just to have, and, I, and I'll drink it. And then right before Christmas, I'll buy another one. Bro, eggnog. Every year, that's my thing. Egg, I like it. I like it. It's a nice treat. Eggnog is so thick. Yeah, it's good. So it's good. so thick. I buy, like, light eggnog. Oh, and then me. when I mix my rum or whiskey into it, I'll hit it with a little bit of water. Oh, no, not me. Dude, it is so thick. Yeah. I like to add How that. do you not... You, if I'm going to... You do. If if how I'm, do you not shit your pants? You do. I do. If I'm, if I'm going to booze up eggnog, I'll add a little Kahlua to it for the... That's just, oh, a little, just a little bit. Uncle it's, Brando's it's a, secret weapon? Right? It's just... It's a, it's a nice little little feel-good drink. You're not drinking it to get drunk, just to have a little bit of a buzz on. It's, it's nice. It's I'll nice. do... Nice. I'll do... Like half and half... I, like Bailey's Irish cream or, or, s- or some kind I of... I going to say, whiskey. <laughs> I'll do half and half whiskey. Half whiskey, half whiskey, <laughs> half and half. 
half and half. <laughs> yes. Yeah, not the CCU eggnog drink. Half whiskey, half whiskey. No, I'll do like half Baileys or other Irish creams. What's the other Irish cream? Is it just called freaking Irish cream? Kahlua? Not, no. No, Kahlua's not the, the Irish The other one. Irish cream, that one. I like it better than Baileys. And it's cheaper. I'll do half that and half eggnog. Ooh. That's pretty good. With some chocolate sauce or some Nesquik in there. Ooh, that'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah, like that. you'd like yeah. that. Yeah. I like to do spiced rum is the classic, like yeah. with eggnog, and you get you get the one that I want from Alex's fundraiser that we drank half of. Yep. I'll drink the other half in eggnog? like some eggnog. But I like Crown Royal because I'm Canadian. Sure. And rye whiskey here is king. Gibson's here, King. Also Gibson's good. and 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 eggnog, very good. Oh. Ryan's Irish cream. Ryan's Irish cream. You don't <laughs> want that. I'll tell you. No, that you much. do not. Are you Irish? No, I'm not Irish. No, not even Irish. No, not even Irish. No. Okay, so if you like eggnog or if you hate eggnog, let us know in the comments Get down because in the comments. Uh, I, you know what, I've been doing a really good job at like the comments where people are are actively trying to engage with us. I've been replying to lots of them because so many people who comment from the nation and want to engage are always positive. Yeah, and, uh, it's it's a great place for uh, to to hang out and get a direct line to us. Yeah, just like patreoncom slash podcast. Little support goes a long way. Very much so. And we're planning the 2025 CCO experiences. Options include, but are not limited to, MagicCon Chicago, MagicCon Atlanta, MagicCon Las Vegas, and whatever regional championships our friends at Face to Face Games have. And other command fests that are yet to be announced which i'm hoping there's some canadian venues that we can go to vancouver always excellent oh i love vancouver yep yep calgary always excellent we talked about that last week yeah love calgary yep i would love to see i would love to get one like one of the cheap flights and get to a command fest toronto again the venue that face to face uses is excellent and it's right in a hotel so you don't even have to go anywhere but we would have to because there'd be like a million of us stayed in this big house because i'm gonna go next time yeah and when i go the degeneracy follows yes very much so so if you want to get in on any of that patreon is where you do it and you get if you're a discord account holder you get an auto invite to our discord and that's where all the planning happens so big thanks to everybody who does that it's gonna be fun now hmm couple things couple things black friday I'm, i'm sure it's not too late it's, but it's w- happened. Th- I, I'm I'm t- I'm telling producer Gary something for the first time ever. Okay. You and I have discussed. But, okay. But now he gets to know live on air. Okay. Is we're probably going to have some of the CCO dude bros here to do like a, a 2025 merchandise sort of rebrand and product kind of brainstorm. Yeah. So if you are interested in magic merch gaming stuff. If Let us art- know. If you have an artistic skill that you would like to contribute, yep. we've had a few people reach out already. We have. Uh, but if you have, please do. We love to hear from you. Like yep. anything that we do, if we can involve you guys, we we want to. So we so do let have. Let us know. And oh man, it's been a while since we've used it because we haven't had to. But when, when there's a need, there's a mighty need yeah. for the CCO design channel on the Discord. And there's a few people who have some artistic abilities. There's a few graphic designers that know how to do all that kind of stuff. Yep. Like uh, our friend... Um, uh, Guy Anth- Pizza? Guy Pizza and Anthony Bockley. Those guys do file conversions for me all the time, <laughs> <laughs> which I very much appreciate. It's the little but, things. Yeah. When we're looking to do a new product lineup with hats and t-shirts and tokens and dice, we want to get as many people from the nation contributing as possible because A, the product gets better. Yeah. B, you design things that you actually freaking want. Yeah. And C, we get to like make a little thing out of it with our friends and make sure that like we can say thank you and, and how awesome everybody in the nation is. Agreed. So that's coming up probably in December. We're just going to take over the damn studio and have some pizza. And I said 12 beer. Uncle Brando said 87. Yeah, 12 beer each. Somewhere in the middle is where we're we'll landing. Have, <laughs> have you been to CCO Experience Calgary? <sighs> did we break? We didn't We didn't say this yesterday. Yester, Last week. week. Yesterday week. Last week. 
fuck. Did we break an all-time record for number of beer drank at a CCO experience in, in the house? Yes. I think we might have. I think we were getting close. We emptied that beer. We emptied that beer. Of course, we emptied the beer. We emptied the fridge every night. Like except three for that, times. Except for that one beer. Like <laughs> the lone survivor. Yeah. I should bring him in and we commemorate him. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He's got PTSD and watch all his <laughs> yeah. friends just get yeah. drank. <laughs> He's got the. The flashback <laughs> memes, the flashback memes with the helicopters and yeah, shit. And it's just this beer going like, oh no. But yeah, so I oh, we'd so be good. we'd be coming close. That one and the one Vegas where we bought too much, and then Keel and and uh, oh, Mac had to give all the beer to that. You lady. know what? There was only six or seven of seven of us in the house that night. I think that because there was ten or eleven of us in the house yeah. this time. I think that Just this was the beer. record. That was a good time. And I say in the house because we definitely, nothing can compare to Vegas. No. Because they don't care if you drink anywhere yes. in the city. Yes. Anyways. That's pretty fun. That's a good time. So, yeah, be, be a part of that. Yep. Patreon.com. Get in the Discord. It's going to be a great time. Yeah, very much so. Now, we have a deck we this do. week. Let's a, do a magic thing. A magic deck tech by our good friend, Chris the Dimwit. The Meat Gazer, mm -hmm. he gave us the deck called Wabbit Season. And it's not just a deck. It's a it's a whole archetype. It's a whole conversation, which yeah. is why we wanted to do it. Because it's the... It's a magic design concept that they're a little bit leaning into over the last X amount of years. It, there's, is there one every... Is there more than one a year now, would you say? And when we say more than one, we're going to let the cat out of the bag, the rabbit out of the hat, if you will. Mm -hmm. Card you can have any number of in your deck. In this Cause, case... Because for a while, it was just Relentless Rats. Yep. Since... For years. Dark Steel that came out in, in like 2003 or four. right? That was, it was like a decade before we got another one. And then we got... What was the next one? Was it, was it Rat Colony or The Apostle? I think it was Shadowborn Apostle. And then it was, it was Rat Colony or Persistent Petitioners. Pers Petitioners came out like in... Ravnica Allegiance mm. or like War of the Spark block, yep. right? And then Rat Colony was in Dominaria. And then we've got Dragon's Approach and Drag here. Uh, no, Dragon's Approach what was, was in Strixhaven. Strixhaven, okay. And then we've got Slime Against Humanity here. Okay, slime Against Humanity okay, was As in, if I didn't prepare. Okay. Was we've in the got, murder set. Karloff Manor. In Not in Karloff terms Manor. of in terms of most expensive to least expensive. This is how they're ordered right now, not in print order. Okay. We've got Hair Apparent. That's the most expensive one? Because it's the newest. It's been out for a week. Yeah. And I think it, it it's, that's, it's really good. That's one of the white ones. And that's what today's deck is about. Yep. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 Rabbit Noble for a uh, white one. When this creature enters, create a number of 1-1 one, one White Rabbit Creature Tokens equal to the number of other creatures you control named Hare Apparent. So you know how they say they they multiply like rabbits? They hump like rabbits? The one new one comes into the colony, just bangs everyone, and they all have a baby. Yes. That is exactly how that works. Mm -hmm. Then there's Rat Colony. It gets bigger for each rat you control. Yeah. In the face. Yes, it humps in the face. Yes. Yes. Well, it's, its fist gets bigger, not its ass. Yes. Yes. Dragons approach three damage when there's five of them in your graveyard. Exile search for a dragon. Yep. Relentless rats gets bigger for each resent relentless for each rat you control, right? The relentless rat. Relentless rat. Yeah. Yep. Then there's also new from um, Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. Yep. A three one vigilance for two knight a Templar knight where you can pay white and tap five untapped creatures and search for whatever what do you find i have no idea an art of legendary a artifact legend card well that's why they're cheap they're like well, they're from a really limited set why are they cheap because they suck you search for, you tap five of them and you search for like a a chroma's memorial or like a sword of caldera or like the caldera set right like there's there's things anyways like I said, then there's slime against humanity that's my favorite one that's the zero zero ooze into play then it gets plus one for each other ooze you control yeah. There's Shadowborn Apostle. That's, That's the tutor for a demon. Sack five, tutor for a demon. And then there's my favorite, and also the cheapest. Ha. Persistent Petitioners. Hashtag advisor. That's the mill one. Yeah, that's the mill one. You tap four to mill 
11. 12. Sweet. So we got them in every color. I think yep. that green and red are both due for uh, a, a new one. What about blue? It's only got one. They can have their last. Black, three. Yep. White, white two. two. Green, red, blue. and blue, one. I think the green and red are due their due. I want it to be extra persistent petitioners. <laughs> <laughs> These Annoying petitioners. Yeah, protesters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so those are the ones, and we're going to get into a little bit of a conversation yeah. once we do the, the deck tech, yeah. but we're going to go we, a little bit fast. Yeah. We wanted to talk about that deck because what we're talking a little bit about today is a little bit that deck. Like mm. People who are thinking, oh, I have a Relentless Rats deck. Oh, Brando has a Slam Against Humanity deck. Ryan has a Persistent Petitioners deck. Our, good, body... friend, our good friend Mac has a has a Dragon's Approach deck. Yeah, we've and uh, I think it's Max Sushi. Mm. I believe he has a Shadowborn Apostles deck. So does Aaron, and so does Tyler. Lots of people in See? the nation have these, so uh, not, say, not saying they're super popular. Not like you're going to run into one of these every day. But you're going to run into them. They exist. Ben has Relentless Rats. Yep, I had Relentless Rats, took it apart. The question that I pose is when you do run into these decks, do they all feel the same despite A, being in different colors and B, being very different cards? Mm -hmm. Do they only enable the same strategy like yeah. is that is that what we're running into so but first we got to find out what the strategy of this one is and see if the others are the same yes we've read the the bun that we're based on yep so now we read the things that makes the bunny go starting with our removal package sure okay or they call it elmer fudd's removal package that means double barrel shotgun a gun shooting somebody right in the face because that's how you hunt for rabbits right is with a shotgun because there's going to be meat left for sure. And we have Swords, Path, Austere Command, Our Reckoning. Reckoning. That kills all non-token things, right? Or is that Correct. Better? Destroy all non-tokes with Convoke. So nice. You can save some I've of your never, bodies. Eight years, never said that. Destroy all non-tokes with Convoke. Non-toke with Convoke. Ooh. And then we have a Wear Down as well. Underrated card, says Ryan, and I agree. I'll give it a read. It's a Sorcery for Green 1. I think because it's a Sorcery, it gets a bad rap. But it's got Gift a Card, so when I cast this, I can get you to draw a card. Mm -hmm. Okay. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. If the gift was promised, instead destroy two artifact or enchantment. So think of the card. Um, th there's a... Ugh, there's a white card. White, white, two, destroy two. Wear away. Wear away? Wipe away. Wipe yes. If you cast it at instant speed, destroy two. If you cast yeah. it at instant speed, kill Just one. Destroy if one. you cast it at sorcery speed, kill two. That costs four. Yeah. And then there's ashes to ashes, and there's also dust to dust. Ha. Destroy two. Those yeah. are from the dark. Those <laughs> are destroy two of course they are. at sorcery speed for three. Yes. Now, if I can destroy two at sorcery speed for two but I let you draw a card, is random card in your deck going to be better or worse than your best thing? Exactly. Right? And yes. that's the question. Early game, I stand a high probability to be proved wrong, and you're going to cast the next thing that's better than what you had. Yeah. But if I hold this in my hand, because remember, sorcery speed, I can't really get you. Yeah. But when you're trying to win the game and you go something like a Chroma's Memorial, go. Or when you do something and say go... You have to take care of this or else I'm going to win. You and can. I go wear down, draw a card, now you don't win. Yep. Probably the card you draw is not as good as yes. the card I destroyed. You having that card and not winning is better than you just winning the game. For me. For you, it's much worse. But for me, it's better because plus I'm I, not dead. Plus, I like the art of this beaver chewing this tree. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I okay. saw a video the other day of a beaver having given itself a bath like a cat. It was very cute. Mm. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. Beavers, amazing animals. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we got, um, I don't know. Let's the, do Yos Yosemite Sam's Land Rush. Sure. Yosemite Ramp. Sam, one of my favorite Looney Tunes characters. We've we got, got Rampant Growth, yep. Cultivate, Locket of Yesterdays. We'll talk about that in a second. Harvest Season, Far Seek, Enduring Vitality, and Patchwork Banner. Patchwork Banner. New one from F Bloomboro. One of the most expensive cards in the set. Jesus. Almost a $7 card. card at Uncommon. Wow. Choose a creature type. Creature's chosen type, get plus one, and you add a color of any mana. Three drop mana rock though unplayable. Oh, really. absolutely! So Never even touch that. <sighs> okay, locket of yesterday's makes cards that you cast one less mana for each card of the same name in your graveyard. Yeah. Now, what's interesting about locket of yesterday's 
is it only provides cost reduction past one mana yes for dragon's approach and slime against humanity yes it because every other card has colored pip colored pip or one colorless yep so dragon's approach and slime are the only two cards that are actually good with with locket yes it gives you two mana per card instead of being just a one mana three mana mana rock yeah. unplayable the the difference here is when you play it in a deck like this you're making one ones and when you have something like your uh who's the dude that when you have a one one come into play you can pay one and draw a card oh a mentor of the meek if your mentor of the meek is now sort of free so your Ooh, hair apparent yep, yep. Is, is basically free and and this is true when you're trying to survive it, oh, let, let me clarify if you're willing to pay two mana for hair apparent and yep. you've got a locket and a mentor, you're still paying two, but now you get your guy and the tokens and you draw a card. And a card yep. back. Pretty cool. And I think that there's something to be said for your, your let's, ca let's call it three one ones for one. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between three one ones for one and three one ones for two. There's a big difference in a deck like this. Because yeah. you can play a token doubler and then just pay one to immediately take advantage of said token doubler, which is not a small advantage in a deck like this. Mm -hmm. I've played them. I'm telling you that's the truth. Yeah. You have to believe me because yeah. I'm smart. Oh, well, okay. Uh, I I'm, believe you, I'm, but it's I'm not because you're smart. I'm on the internet. It's because you're experienced. Yes, there we go. <laughs> it's because you're freaking old. I've done this lots of times. Lucky Rabbit's Foot. This is our protection section. Okay. Protect section. This is... Unbreakable formation, dawn's truce, and they shall know no fear. And they shall know no fear. Basically, it's all cards that just give all your permanents like protection or indestructible. Yes, indestructible yep. and or hexproof. Yeah, in some way. Okay, so now we've got some hair smackdown. <laughs> Gotta smack that hair down. Nobody likes that shit. <laughs> no, well, if you smack the hair down, it makes the tree look bigger. Okay, so we've got Burrow Guard Mentor. It gets bigger for the number of creatures you control. Mirror Entity, you can pay X to make all your guys XX. MVP in this deck. In all of these decks, in fact, if you can play a, a Mirror Entity, it'll it's a house in decks like this. Because it has every creature type, and it says creatures you control have base power and toughness. Because they most of them make themselves bigger. So if you turn all of your dudes into 7-7s, seven -sevens, with a bunch of counters on them, mm. or they get bigger for the number of them you have. Mm -hmm. All it's an exponential growth. Almost, you can do so much work with that. And card. now I really love this guy, Regal Bunnycorn. He's a rabbit unicorn. God damn it. <laughs> yep. And power and toughness equal to the number of non-land permies you control. That's pretty good. Permanence. So all those rabbit tokens. Yeah. Big, big, yep. big slash big. That's yes. his power and toughness. Yes. Yep. Enough now, slash enough. That's what that says. Yep. I want to go to a few of this, like the standout, like this is, this is the bread and butter and we're getting into the territory where it's like, are all of these the same? And not just rabbit token, any number cards, mm -hmm. but now we're getting into like Celestia, I just, suppose we should have read the commander, token decks, right? Sec well, the, second Harvest, Ogier Talk, O'Hare Talk? O'Hare Talk. Parallel Lives, Doubling Season, Mondrak Glory Dominus, Doubling Chant, and Thrumming Stone. Yes. All of those cards were present, slash are present, in my Slime Against Humanity deck. Yeah. Every one of them. Yeah, those would be because... present in Slimes, those would be present in Hair Apparent, those would be present in uh, Rat Colony. Depending on your build, they could be in either of the Rats deck. Yeah. They could be apparent in Shadowborn Apostles if you're that way. Like you could play these in any one of them. With I would actually no Thrumming Stone would be real good in Dragon's Approach, but the other ones wouldn't be because you're not making a dude. But Thrumming Stone and Dragon's Approach real good, real good. And Thrumming Stone real good is in basically every Shadowborn deck I've ever seen. It's a four five drop legendary artifact. Oh, this is what you search for with your Knights Templar, your yeah. Templar Knights. Yeah, because yeah, it's legendary. Yeah. And spells you can cast have Ripple 4. When you cast this spell, you may reveal the top four cards of your library, and you may cast spells with the same name as the first spell you cast yes. if they if they share a name. So you go, 
approach, 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 slime, 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 hair, 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 rat, 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 rat whatever. You, you just do it. Do it really fast with apostle. Apostle, 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 apostle. There and then you you're out. Yes. And then you sacrifice those apostles to get all your demons, and then you win the game. Yes. That's, that's why it's there, right? Or if you're not playing apostles, you say go, and then you get blown out by a wrath of God, and then you're sad. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yep. ask, ask our buddy Ben about that. Ooh. Every single time I've ever seen him go off, because he has no haste because he's mono black. Yeah. So he says go. And then like, without fail, the next guy, the next person in line is like, well, I can't rely on any other. Uh, yeah, wrath of God, else. baby. <laughs> like, and, it, and Ben goes, oh, oh, I should take this fucking deck apart. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. I Every should time. throw this so deck good. in the garbage. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I love so that. So we've identified the first thing that says, hey, these are like, you can build these in a similar way. Yeah. Right? And when we're looking for unique gameplay experiences on, on, a, on a micro level, having 25% of the cards. Be the same card. Doesn't give you a unique gameplay experience, though it does give you a consistent one. Yes. On a macro level, oh, we're seeing a bunch of cards that are apparent in a bunch of these different decks. See what they did there, apparent? Yep. In in a bunch of these kind of decks, on a meta level, we're gonna look at or we're gonna we're gonna continue the deck tech to see on a meta level if if all of these decks are the same like strategy to win us the game. Yeah. And Brando thinks that they are, except for persistent petitioners. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So which, okay. Which and it, and it also does the same thing, but it wins on a different axis, which is mill, as opposed mm. to beating you to death because all of these decks beat you to death and that's how the deck works yeah okay so let's look at some let's read the commander oh because we haven't done that yet let's do it let's do it everybody knows what the deck kind of does but like yeah why did we pick this guy why aren't we playing mono white wabbits yes okay phineas nothing Mono white white rabbits, rabbits? Nothing? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Nothing? I, I, Walking I, I, yesterday is... We're, oh, I'm late for an important date. What the fuck, you guys? <laughs> Come on! Jesus. You're crossing your IPs. Oh, cross your IPs. Cross your mother's ass. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Phineas Ace Archer. He's a tutu for white, green, rabbit archer. So he's right on theme. Yep. Vision Reach. When he attacks, put a plus one counter on each other creature you control that's a token or a rabbit. Okay. <laughs> Which is most of them. Yes. Then if creatures you control have total power, 10 or more, which they will, you draw a card. So that's when he attacks, good. draw a card. Yes. Why don't they just say, if, if this was a Simic card, yeah. when he attacks, draw a card, put a <laughs> land, land onto them. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Oh, man. Fucking white. God damn. Okay. So he's a right. rabbit. He... Is card draw on the command zone if yep. we have enough guys, which we probably will, because newsflash, we're playing 25 hair parents. Yep. I want to look at the card draw. Okay. Okay. That's carrots with benefits. Uh, actually, I don't know if this is card draw. Oh, no, that's not ca- No, never mind. No, right. okay. Carrots Door of with- Destinies, that's going to make all our rabbits bigger. I would cut that. To play the new one. I We're already playing the new one. I would still cut Door of Destinies. Oh, coat of arms. Frickin' live dangerously. Ooh. Fuck, I love coat of arms. I love dropping a coat of arms and saying, my guys get plus three, plus three. And then somebody else says, my guys get plus ten, plus ten. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, fucking good. <laughs> good <laughs> thing I have this brash taunter. <laughs> good thing I have this disenchant in my hand. I'll kill my own shit if you attack me. <laughs> Perfect. Dangerous, baby. I'll two for one myself. <laughs> Just so you kill someone else. Okay, we've got... Burke? Burke? It's Burke. Long, Long Year of the, the law. law. Yeah. Okay, so he puts plus ones on, on our guys. He's a 4-4 four, four for 6 with Vig. As long, when he enters, he puts a plus one, plus one yep. counter on each of up to two target creatures. Whenever a creature we control with a plus one, plus one counter on it attacks, double the number of plus one, plus one counters on it. Now, important to Jesus note, Christ. our commander is going to put tokens on all of our dudes because we, our boy Meat Gazer went hard and really rabbit themed the deck we could have had some cats in here that would be very very good didn't do it wow didn't do it he went full rabbit full rabbit on our asses full rabbit just humping full hump hump yeah. like humping him like don king don king yes yeah, that's an that's inside a, that's an inside joke yeah, that's, that's an, a deep cut that's a right that's a that's how a, do you freaking remember that because that was a that's a very endearing moment that's a very that's one of the most humanizing stories you have ever told me about yourself is the 
the Bunny Trevor Don King humping story. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. listen to Commander Cook out long enough. I might tell the story. There it is. Banner of Kinship that makes all your guys get big. That, that's the new one. That's the better Door of Destinies. Branching Evolution. Let me guess. That makes all your guys get big. If would get counter, get double counter. Hardening Scales. If Hardening get counter, scales. get additional counter. Yep. Valley Quest Caller. We might have Ooh. to read that one. Other rabbits, birds, bats, mice, jerk-offs get plus one. That means all your guys yep. can get big. And when they come into play, you scry one. That's good in this deck. Oh, that's, that's very good, because then you draw deck. a card when you attack with your commander. That's right. Yep. And then Harvest Right Host. Is that right? Yep. Har- Harvest f- Right Host. He's yep. a fucking citizen. When it... It's, but it's a rabbit, yeah. more specifically. <laughs> he's just a he's just a guy he's going a, out shopping. He's, he's a, a citizen. Dude eating food. Yeah, okay. What a guy. When... Harvest Right Host or another rabbit you control enters. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus zero oh until end of turn. Then draw a card if it was the second time this ability resolved this turn. Or another, so, oh, another rabbit you control comes into play. I so if you. I cast Hair Apparent and get a rabbit and then it puts another rabbit into play, I draw a card. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It get, they all get bigger and then I draw a card. That's a good yeah, one. Like that's that. a good one. Like okay. That. Like Speaking that. of card draw, burrowing for cards. This is our card draw. Ah, section. there it is. Okay. Yes. Oh, I don't want to read all this. I got it. I'll do it. Caretaker's do it. talent. Caretaker's all of these talents are expensive. Yes, they are. Yeah. This is a class, or ass as we could call it, for white two. Oh, I made it big just so I can read it even better. No, it's too big. I love making it Cause big. Because you, you missed it. Now Frick. I can't see it anymore. Man, Make small. Story, there we go. story of my life. God damn it. Whenever one or more tokens you control enter the battlefield, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. Bullshit. Boo. But it works out whatever. Then you can pay one white to take it up to level two. Then it also has... When this class becomes level two, create a token that is a copy of target token you control, which is probably a rabbit. Make you draw a card. Then for white three creature tokens you control, get plus two, plus two. That is card draw and more card draw and then a win condition. That's a good Yeah, so deck. if four and three, this is an eight mana draw, make a token, make all my guys can have big. Mm-hmm. So eight mana probably win the game. Like if you top deck this and you have eight mana and like 10 dudes. You're going to do a lot of You're damage. attacking instead of for freaking... 10 you're attacking for 30 somebody gonna have bad day yeah bad day. tempt with bunnies this is tempting offer you get rabbit i get rabbit you get rabbit i get rabbit you get rabbit i get rabbit and i'm gonna tell you right now after our calgary adventure mm-hmm. i had i had tempt with discovery played on me four times mm. so i'm gonna tell you what this card does this is a sorcery for white two that gives you one rabbit and you draw a card and that's it that's it that's it. Nobody's got, ever going to make a bunny and draw a card, so you can make I an got, additional bunny I and got, draw an additional card. I got tempted. I didn't take the tempt, but everybody else in the game took the tempt. I should have taken the tempt and tempted out a freaking no, strip gotta, mine. You got to talk to the other players, man. And I like, told everybody, if they freaking tempt, if they take it, I'm taking fucking strip mine, and I'm going to strip mine, and I'm going to play this Crucible of Worlds for my hand, and I'm going to strip mine everybody for being fucking greedy. Yeah. That's what I said. Yep. And I it? didn't take the tent. And he didn't do it. And, didn't and then do they it. did. Empty threats. Yeah. So oh, I said, man. I was like the first guy to say no. And then everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Assholes. Dinks. Vanquisher's banner is next. Choose a creature type. ETBs, draw a card. All you guys can get big. Sure. Shamanic Revelation. Draw a card for each guy you got with bigger, bigger, bigger four. Th- then you can get... Oh, you draw a card for each creature control, then you gain life for each creature control sure. that's big. And we'll have a few. All I hear is draw a card. Yes. Slate of Ancestors. Slate of Ancestry. Pay for. Tap. <laughs> Discard your hand. I'm listening. Lol. Draw a card for each creature you control. That's pretty good. I like this one in decks like this this guy slate of ancestry i think is underrated in slimes and hares mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. templars and, and goblins rats and goblins yep. this card originated in onslaught block back when when like slivers and wizards and beasts and elves and goblins were the creature type du jours if i had one dollar for every time somebody said i'm gonna tap my slate of ancestry and then in response, somebody killed all their dudes. Oh. I would have precisely $2. Oh. And let me tell you how good that feels, because it's really fucking good. Because they discard their hand, too. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Discard hand, part of cost. Yeah. Draw nothing. So good. Have nothing. And then we've got an inspiring call. Draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one counter on it. Those creatures gain indestructible until end of turn. And that's an instant. That's a good card. That is an 
That's Excellent a good card. card. Who? What? This is the, we're looking at the uh, Fallout one. What yeah, is the one that I have? I believe is from Warhammer, but I don't think it's from Warhammer. It's originally from Jesus. Oh, way the, back in the day, yeah. Cons of Tarkir. Cons of Tarkir. Yeah, I and that's I, a seventy-nine cent uncommon that does that. That's yep. a good ass card too. I, I, Shitty art. This though. this is an instant, and I play this in Calamax, and when I can. Frickin' draw a card and copy it and draw a card and copy it and draw a card. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's good. I play it in that's Animar because it makes all my... Good card. X do my... Yeah. My space hydras gain indestructible yeah. and I draw a bunch yeah, of yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah, Pretty good. Okay. Final category. Well, final category already? Wabbit Storm. Yeah, Wabbit I, said, Storm. I said it was going to be fast. Oh, yeah, we did th- We did do this really quick. Okay. So we already talked about Hair Apparent. That's yep. the card du jour. 25 of those in the deck. We're going to talk about is that enough, is that too many in a moment. But first, we're going to talk about War and War Leader. War and War Leader's got Offspring. So when you cast it, you can kick kick it, Offspring yeah. it. Yes. And you get a copy of it that's a 1-1. One, one. Okay? And when you attack, you choose one, create a rabbit, or attacking creatures you control get plus one. I know what I would choose. Yes. Okay, Jacked Rabbit. <laughs> X. <laughs> jacked Rabbit. Yeah, Gary likes that one. Yeah. Producer Gary likes that one. He's got uh, Ravenous, which is X. And if X is five or more, you draw a card when it enters. Mm -hmm. And when he attacks, you create uh, one one for his power. Oh, that's good. So when you pay X, that's how much bigger he gets. And then he gets uh, that that many ones. Now, I don't exactly know how stud farming goes, but is that like where you send the bull off to the stud farm and you just pump him full of fucking testosterone and make him bigger and stronger, and then he just impregnates the other cow and she has, like, octoplets because there's just so much sperm? Is that what Jack Rabbit does? He just rolls in and he's thick as fuck, and he's like, hey, little, well, little lady or man rabbit, because I am just jacked, I will have so many offspring by banging you. Is that yes. how that works? Yeah, this guy's on, like, this guy's on frickin' Tran, and he's on... Uppers, downers, and candy corn. Yeah. He never he, sleeps. He's on frickin' myosin inhibitors. He's, he's on... He's basically Tony Khan right now. Horse creatine. Just... This guy's rubbing strychnine on the middles of his lips, on the inside of his lips. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that guy's fucked, man. Yeah, don't ask us how we know all that. Okay, season no, it, of the burrow. It's in the art. Yeah. It's in the art. Just look at the picture. See, this is the season where you pick paws. I like this one. Pick one paw. I like these cards. White rabbit. Pick two paw. Exile a permanent. Its controller draws a card. Dope. Pick three paw. Return target permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Indestructible counter on it. And you can pick total of five paw per turn. Or uh, five paw when you cast it. That's fine all of those seasons are good in bloomboro yes. we reviewed every one of those as being good because they yes. give you so much versatility flexibility and actually raw power whether you pick like one paw times five or one and two and two yeah. or like one 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 two like it's, it's yeah uh, two and three yeah. like they're they're good because of all the flexibility but like every mode you want yes right? and none of the modes are shitty on how often does that happen? You have a cycle of five cards where there's no shitty modes on it. You ever cool, heard of Cryptic man. Command, bro? Well, Cryptic Command? You ever heard of Incendiary Command, bro? It's a pretty bad card. Oh. That's right. Cryptic Command makes up for it, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for the common good, create X tokens that are a copy of target creature you control. Then tokens gain indestructible. You gain one life for each token you control. Now, I would if, cut that. If I don't like that. For the common good, copies a hair apparent... When hair parent enters, create a number of one ones equal to the number of creatures named hair parent. If the hair parent is a token, because you have to make a copy of a token. Oh, that's the that's the key. Oh, right? we're not playing a mimic vat in this deck, which we should be. Ooh, I would cut for go. the modern good and play. What did I just say? Mimic vat mimic instead, vat. because then you get a hair parent every turn, and they're all going to leave behind money tokens. That's money important. tokens? Bunny tokens. Come <laughs> on, man. Bunny's just throwing just... bills at the strip clubs. <laughs> yeah, what's so up? Jack Rabbit rolls in. He's got his pile of hondos under his arm. Under his arm and his tiny little nuts. Because he's so jacked, he can't reach his pocket and his pants. So yes. He has to carry it under his arm like a briefcase. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Hop to it. Create three one one rabbits. Yep. Sorcery speed for three. And Cadia Collar of the Small. This is a hell of a card. Orc Ranger, three three trample for three. 
when she deals combat damage to a player for each token you control, create a one one rabbit token. That is a good card. Okay. She and she got trample and we're gonna put plus ones on her probably. Well she's not a rabbit, but maybe. It's it's hypothetically possible. If she was the commander of this deck, we would see things that would give her double strike. Yeah. Or make her bigger. Or, or we'd flying see, unblockable type or stuff. Or like an abundance of treasure making things. Because then you get a rabbit for every treasure token you have, all yeah. that kind of You business. know what? I think because she has trample, we would just see more plus one, yeah. plus one, plus one, like counter strategy enabling things because she's already got trample and then you make rabbits. Right? Right. Well, you got to make other things to make rabbits. That's yeah, that's fine. That's We're playing key. 25 hair parents. Yeah, that's true. We're fine. Is that enough? Now that we've well, now that we've mentioned every card um, on the deck, is it enough? 25? I think so because lots of things care about rabbits. And hair apparent cares about rabbits. Like it's it's doing the same thing. When when you play a Shadowborn Apostles deck, you need more because you need five of them, for for example. And then they do a demon thing. And you need more dragons approaches because you need five of them in your graveyard to tutor a dragon. And you need them to do your damage and for you. you. How, so it's, right? how many dragons approaches is it to like if you just go dragons approach, dragons approach, dragon, it's ten would do thirty. Yep. So you need 34 of them to kill? Yes, but that's not necessarily... 13. 13 of them to kill. That's not necessarily how you kill with Dragon's Approach. But, like, we're... In, in Dragon's Approach Storm decks... Okay, now, in... Here's the word. Aggressive Dragon's Approach decks. Dragon's Approach Alesha. Dragon's Approach Sir Sirkara, the bold, that lets you sure. cast off the top of your library. Yep. In the combo-esque ones that are really aggressively trying to wear your life total down, you need that many. In the Shadowborn decks where you want to go Shadowborn as early as possible and aggressively reanimate them to do it again without having to rely on tons of card draw. That's why we see or Orthelos, the, the coin god that puts things back in our hand when they die. Sure. That's why Ow, you see yeah. so much mass reanimation in, in the Shadowborn decks. In the Slime Against Humanity decks that are just looking to wear down your life total as quick as possible yeah, like giant dude. by casting so many slimes. All of these decks have this same kind of yeah. meta analysis yeah. that we've done on them. They're all aggressive decks that are attacking your life total. Yeah. I paid th I played 36 in my Slime yeah. Against Humanity deck, which I think might have been too many, mm -hmm. but mine were all signed and stuff in Chicago, yeah, yeah. so you got to have that many. But I think in my head, 30 to 33 is where you want to be with an any number of card oh. card. Yeah. In, in my head, because in my head, I'm always thinking about the, what if this is all I draw? Mm -hmm. God damn it. What if I do, because I've had it in my Slime Against Humanity deck, yep. probably because I had too many. It's just, fuck, I have land and Slime Against Humanity. So every turn it goes Slime Against Humanity, land, Slime Against Humanity, land, then Slime, Slime, land, right? Yeah. And if you're not well, doing that and you're getting more, because there's a lot of stuff yeah. in this deck that's like to, meant to ramp you and meant to... You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of... You're moving backwards, though, yeah. away from, like, that meta-analysis. Are they all yeah. aggro decks? You're moving back to that... Hmm, I, I, I'm not sure if it's a micro or, or macro analysis that says, hey, there's no there's no diversity within this deck to, to the, do other things, and right? The, the thing that, at least in my play, this is play experience for me, and I'm like, oh, yeah. my experience. Well, I, hey, I've, I've played Petitioners yeah. in two different builds, and yeah. I've played Dragon's Approach in a Jeskai, like, combo deck that was like a Storm deck. And did you ever notice, like, in, in mine, because I really, really like my Slam Against Humanity deck. It's mm -hmm. a great, it's a really fun deck. It's, it, everybody knows what's going on. It's, it's really fun. But I find that the deck for me is boring to play, because I don't have enough, like I'm waiting for to get like one of my cool enablers, right? Not mm. like oh, a doubling season. Now I make giant slimes each time. Like I want to get my my dude that gives all my guys with plus one plus one X, or you know what I mean? Something that's different and, and yeah. unique, and that somebody has to read. Yeah. Right. It's, okay. So you're playing. That's what I want. You're playing your slime deck, and you're doing the slime thing, and yep. that has some level of expectation on your part and your opponent's part yes. to it. And get oozed. oh oh geez. Get slimed is dirtier. Oh, yeah. geez. Wouldn't it be great if I drew the best card in my deck, doubling season? Maybe yeah. you've heard of it. Yeah, maybe you've heard that cool. card's pretty good in my token, token deck. Cool. If I want to give somebody a unique gameplay experience and still wallop them. Oh, yeah. What's this other interesting, unique card that I heard about on Commander Cookout Podcast? Like, yeah. what's that thing? And 
and that's great. I like that. Yeah. But you can't not include doubling season. Of course not. And Ozier talk or whatever, and doubling this and yeah. jerk off season that. And then yeah. all of a sudden, everything's the same. Yes. So what do I do then? Put all of the card draw in my deck or tutors in my deck to yeah. rip through my deck till I find this thing that makes my deck unique? To find that, yeah. <laughs> and at which, and at, at which point... Then I'm not even doing the most powerful thing, and yeah, I don't know I if you know the thing that makes the deck go. Yeah, yeah. Petitioners and slimes and dragons approach aren't the most powerful cards. No, they're just not. Sure, you can search for a null spine dragon, and if somebody took twelve this turn, I can draw twelve cards. That's fucking powerful. It's very good, right? Um, if I can cast six slime against humanities in one turn, which I have, that's powerful that's magic. Good. Right, but there's some setup, and the the balance, the weird balance is okay. If I want all this setup and all this this enabling in my deck, I've got to cut down on my slimes or my dragons approaches or my partitioners, right? And and then what am I doing? A am I am I playing twenty of these in my deck? Because yeah. that's not good enough. Yeah. And and I'm changing what my deck is doing. And if my deck is an aggro deck, because they all are. Yeah. except for petitioners, which is, except it's attacking a different resource. Yes. Then I'm not doing it right. And, right. and then it ends up not being very good. Yeah. So you kind of have to go all in. And when you go all in, they always feel... A little samesy. Samesy from the cards that I'm picking and samesy from the strategy that I'm trying to enact. And, given, and again, I'll go back to my Slime Against Humanity mm. decks. It's the one I have the most experience with. A lot of the cards in this deck, I play in that one. Right? Like the yeah, decks yeah. are kind yeah. of the same. So like when you do one of these, any number of card in your library, like do you do you go on theme? Like for our, for example, Buddy Ben plays Relentless Rats mm -hmm. with Marinar because mm -hmm. he's the but but he could very easily play a black white or black green and then play all of the white or green things that are in this deck oh. to make his deck <laughs> just better. You almost said the thing that I'm waiting for. Ooh. And I haven't got there yet. Ooh, I'm very excited for it. What is it? And I saw it on Twitter the other day, somebody oh. talking about it. Oh, and I shit. and I brought it up and said, hey, I was really thinking about this and trying to make it work. And since that time in my in my mind, we've gotten Templar Knights, we've yep. got Hair Apparent, and yep. we got Slime Against Humanity. Yeah, buddy. Okay. I want to make a deck that has two or more versions of any number of cards, cards, okay? And my thought at the time was Persistent Petitioners uh -huh. and Dragon's Approach because I had a, a Jeskai, two different Jeskai decks that played Petitioners. Okay. And Petitioners says tap for advisors you control to mill. Yeah. There's an advisor that says when you cast it, name a non-creature card, that card costs two less. I thought Dragon's if, Approach. If I could name Dragon's Approach with that freaking advisor and mill myself and then do some kind of graveyard combo like a, a Past in Flames or an Underworld Breach right. with Dragon's Approach when they cost red, I could go like Jessica's Will into Pyretic Ritual and just go red, 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 red after I milled myself a whole bunch. Bam, 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 that's bam, some CCO bullshit right there. Yeah. That's, right? That's right up there with Arc Slogger the deck. Yes. So if you're out in the nation and you want that whole situation to be thrust upon your face, <laughs> like if you want just soggy partitioners and just like real hairy freaking dragons approach just smashed up into your face yeah you let me know on the discord <laughs> let's put that in the casual deck building channel <laughs> because uh th that was the deck and i thought okay can i do elsha to to rip through my deck right do i do i do lots of partitioners and do i make it like a mill myself combo with partitioners till i get that one advisor i don't even remember the name of it it's on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. Joel put it up there for us. Most likely. Guy. He's a good guy. Do I bring that one back? And then, and then, like, does it work when I'm casting out of my graveyard with Unearth? Does it work when I'm Unearth? I, I don't know. But I think that that would be a very cool combo deck that nobody would be mad about because there's so many moving pieces. And it's so stupid. And there's two different any number cards, which yeah. I've never seen. And I look at a lot of Magic decks, and we go to events, and there's just... 
you just don't run into that. I actually saw one guy that had a Relentless Rats slash Rat Colony deck, and I asked him why he did that, and he said it was because he couldn't, like, he couldn't find any more Relentless Rats, but he already had a oh, bunch of Rat yes, Colonies, yes. so he played them all. Yes, I have seen a Rat Colony deck that had Relentless Rats in it, but it was like, it's, yeah, same thing. Yeah. I got like four Relentless Rats because I didn't get enough in my booster box of Dominaria, yeah, is they're... what it was. Look at yeah. this, a little me in a box. I, I, yeah, I opened up the wrong, uh, oh, <laughs> the well, wrong I, tab. I kind of like that tab. That was a good tab. It had me in a box. That's fine. There you go. So, I yeah, I don't know. I so, appreciate that these exist because yes. they very much break the the rule of commander. You can only play one. And so many people, and so many people like them. That's the thing, right? Like everybody has their own. Whether it be a unique build, maybe not, but they all have a unique kind of take on them you know what i mean like i've seen I, yeah I've seen but few, I, I don't think that they do though i've seen a few relentless rats decks and while they all do the same thing it's rat into rat into rat into thrumming stone yeah. to yeah, get yeah. blown out by a wrath of god in their head when they tell me about the deck they all have like a different reason why they built it and a different like kind of goal for themselves when they play it beyond mm. just rat 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 win mm -hmm. and i appreciate that i like that people are doing that when i played my slime against humanity deck it's just I'm trying to beat you with oozes because these are the best oozes, right? Like, yeah, I, I kind of dig the the thought. I like that this is a token strategy built on like a shitty token because you could just do sapperlings and just win more games or goblins and 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 have that stigma, right? It it does put you on kind of a different path, yeah. Than saying, hey, this is my goblin token deck or. Or this is my Selesnia generally, just generally populate token deck. You know where I think Hair Apparent belongs? Boros. Because then you have all of the impact tremors effects. Mm. You want to know how fast you can fuck somebody up with Hair Apparent and an impact tremor? You want to really Real know? Real fast. You want to really know how fast rabbits can fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Real fast. And then you have Red. And you know what Red has? Haste. And you know what most... What? all of the any number of creatures don't have haste 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 <laughs> here i found the card council of the absolute this is a 36 cent mythic rare from you might have heard of this set because you bought one pack ever okay dragon's maze i was about to say was is it dragon's maze <laughs> okay it's uh, a human thing. advisor for blue white two just like our good friend grand arbiter augustine the fourth okay Human advice, Council of the Absolute enters, choose a non-creature, non-land card name. I choose Dragon's Approach. Of course you do. Your opponents can't cast spells with the chosen name. Sure. Sure. So if I'm playing against that one deck that Mac has. The other Dragon's Approach yeah. deck. Spells with the chosen name you cast cost two less to cast. I like that. That's yeah. good. I like that. And part. correct me if I'm wrong, if I cast a Past in Flames. Uh-huh. I'm casting cards from my graveyard uh -huh. for, for like cards in my graveyard gain flashback. Uh -huh. Their flashback cost is equal to their mana cost. Correct. I'm casting cards for their flashback cost. Correct. And if something is a cost reducer, it applies to their flashback cost because flashback casts the card. Also correct. So All dragon's approach would cost red. And if I had like 30 of them in my graveyard and I don't know, 30 red mana. Somebody I could just die. I could just say everybody take 90. I'm going to search for like 15 dragons on my deck <laughs> just in case anybody's at 91 life. Dude, I'm telling you, I might actually go back to the freaking lab with that this. That could deck. be fun. I think that could be a cool deck. And can I tell you a dragon's maze story that you will laugh at? I, I have attended yes. in my life. Okay, final thought of the day. Grand total of three chaos drafts in my whole life. That's where you buy okay. random packs. Yep. And it wasn't, we supplied the packs. It's, here's our pack wall. You buy three, and they go in the pool. Yep. And I bought, like, whatever, whatever, and a dragon's maze because they were there. Because lol. Because lol, right? Because lol, $2. And we opened the thing, and, like... We've all passed the pack, like the fourth or fifth of pack one, and I opened Dragon's Maze first because I wanted to get it the fuck out of the way. Yeah. And somebody on the other side of the table goes, who's the asshole that threw a Dragon's Maze pack in here? <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad that and you people said, were getting cards yes. that I bought for free, and they're mad at me about it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck, it was me, dude. Like, yeah. I also put in a collector pack, though, in that. 
That, hey, that there round. you go. Yeah, buddy. Of like the the first one, the Journey to Nyx or whatever it was with the with the fancy lands, the cool basics. Yeah, uh, Beyond Death, Theros Beyond Death. That's the one. I was yeah. very excited about. I felt like a, I was balling out of control. And what do I get? Shit on for buying a Dragon's Maze pack because they were cheap. Because mm-hmm. nobody wanted them, and nobody should, because they're not very good. <laughs> nobody still wants them. That's correct. It, hey, if you wanted to get a discount on one, because I know Fusion's got some. <laughs> yeah, well, they definitely have some kicking around that they would be very excited if you bought them at FusionGamingOnline.com. They are your source for all your gaming needs, where you can use CCO Holiday special promo code, save yourself 5% off, and let them know that their partnership with your boys in Saskatoon at CCO Podcast is a good one. Which it should be because we're great guys and you're great people doing great stuff in the world. Big thanks to Pile of Bones Brewing Coat, the second coolest thing to come out of Regina, and a beer sponsor for all of the degenerate stuff that we're going to do on the internet in the new year. We hope you all join us for that. And big thanks to producer Gary and the Damn Media Network out here helping us do all this stuff, keeping us warm, giving us a roof over our heads, a place to record the show. And a big thanks. At the very end, to all of you for listening to the show, we couldn't and we wouldn't do it without you. You mean a lot to us, and thanks so much for being here, and we will see you next week on a very, very... Ex- C- can I say one more thing? Yes. The Caesar that I... The two Caesars I drank at the, the casino that I talked about last week, uh-huh. big thanks to the bartender and the waitress there. Very much appreciate them. Just throwing that out there. Always appreciate your service staff. That doesn't mean with giant tips if you can't afford it, but... There's a special place in hell Mm -hmm. for people who are rude to service staff because they're out there doing their jobs, trying to make you have a good night. We should all do the same. Mm. We should all be so lucky as to just have a good night when we go out to have fun. That's brandology right there. Have a good time, everybody, and we'll see you again next week for a very exciting episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme!